Let's talk about the OSPF non-NSSA forward address. So for this example, I have a simple network of four routers, three of which are going to run OSPF. So the green area here is area zero. I have area um, one to four over here. And I'm connected with a serial between router two and router three and a fast ethernet between router three and router one. On this side, uh, because this is switch, of course, I'm running ethernet over here or network type ethernet over here and router 4 itself is not running OSPF. So looking at this forward address, if two routers are border routers and only one is redistributing a route, then this router will be chosen as the next hop regardless of cost. So let's say I had a route, a static route to that loop bag of R4 that I'm redistributing on router 2 towards router 3 or into area 1, area 0 I should say. Route 3 receives this route from uh, router 2 and installs it in the OSPF database with the next hop being the serial address of router 2. So all traffic will go over this uh, top link over here. So of course to fix the situation you could also redistribute this route on router 1. However if we're not going to do that then all traffic will uh, continue to flow over R2 unless these criteria are met. So if these interfaces are enabled for OSPF um, and these e interfaces are in the network type broadcast and they are not passive then we then our tree is basically going to set the forward address on this external route and it's going to choose the destination towards R1 even though R1 is not redistributing this route why is it chosen, choosing R1? because the cost is lower uh, so those criteria has to be met this interface address or this network I should say should be known in OSPF and it should not be passive and it should be Ethernet. So let's get into the configuration of this. So uh, on R4, let's start on R4. So if I show IP route, I just have a static route pointing towards the 2 and the 1 over here. All IP connectivity has already been set up. So I'm just going to focus on the OSPF. If I show IP protocols, for instance, I do not have OSPF running right now. So I'm just going to create some OSPF entries. I'm, uh, creating the 13, 23, 1 to 4 network and I'm advertising these loop banks in area 0 and this one will be area uh, 124. So uh, 23, 124, that should go on router 2. On router 1, I need the 13 and the 124. And on router 3, I need the 13 and the 23. So because I have the uh, interface type point-to-point -point between R1 and R3, this neighborship will come online immediately. And we can see that we have one neighbor on this statement and one neighbor on here. I show IP route OSPF. I should have the loopback of R2, the loopback of R1, and the network between R2, R3, and R1. So let's see if I can reach that. So ping dot one dot two and dot four and I can reach R4 because again I have this static route that basically uh, sends every sends everything back so very simple config so let's take a look at this uh, forward address this LSA if I show IP OSPF database I do not have any external LSAs right now so let's fix that so on R2 I'm gonna create a static route to the loop bag of R4 then 0, 1, 2, 4, 4. And I'm going to go into router OSPF 1 and I'm going to say redistribute distribute static subnets. And I'm going to say metric type 1. So I want this metric to increase. So metric type 2 is the default, so it will just stay at 20. But in this case, I'm just going to change it to 1. That's not really required for this forward address. I just want to make it more clear. So let's paste this in on R2. And before I actually do that, because I've already met all the criteria, so let me go into router OSPF1. I'm going to say passive interface, fast Ethernet 0 on R2. And I'm going to say passive interface, fast Ethernet 0 on R1 as well. So our neighborship on this network segment should go down because these interfaces are set to passive. These other criteria have already been met because the default network type is broadcast on Ethernet. And this route is known as an OSPF route. So I'm only having these uh, interfaces as passive right now. So 
let me paste this in on R2. And if I go on R3 and show IP route OSPF, once OSPF converges, I should have an external type 1 route to the loopback of R4 going towards 10.0.23.2. And it has a cost of 84. So that's the uh, zero cost and the, uh, I believe the 20 and probably one from the loopback. So let's take a look at the database, show IP OSPF database for and we can see that we have an external type 5 over here. So let me take a look at the external database and we can see that this forward address is all zeros and the advertising router is running to my zero two. So let's change this, let's make this forward address to go to R1. So like I said before, the only thing that we need to do is change these interfaces back to not passive. So no passive over here. And no passive over here. So if I go back to R3, eventually, there it go, we can see that it changed to 13.1 instead of 23.2. So even though R1 is not redistributing this route, we can we, OSPF still chooses the path towards R1. And if I look at the database, now the forward address is set to 10.0.1.2.4.4. So and before it was all zeros, as you would expect with a normal OSPF external route. So this is a very specific OSPF case where the forward address is set. No, in normal situations, you'd probably not see a forward address set. If you do, then there's probably some something wrong with the config or you've met all these criteria. Of course, in a normal network, you wouldn't run OSPF on these interfaces if this one is not running OSPF as well. And if you do, you'd probably set these to passive um, because there's no really need to neighbor between R2 and R1 because we're already neighboring area 0 here. So, but if all these specific conditions are met, we are actually setting the forward address or the next hop to 10.0.13.1. So if I trace to 1.0.4, source loop x0, I can see that I'm going over R1. So that's basically it. Thank you for your time.